Hello, welcome. It is the Nisha Jackson Show. We sure appreciate you being here. Make sure you go to nishajackson.com or uh, onepeakmedical.com or takebrandex.com. Those are all great places to uh, get your fix of Nisha Jackson. And also, make sure to you get your fix every single week here on the Nisha Jackson Show. Subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button, also the notification button, and share, 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 share. Um, I'm a little anxious about doing this show today. I don't know why. I'm feeling a little <laughs> off. He's so not anxious. <laughs> <laughs> nice lead in though. Thank you. Nice lead in. There are a lot of people that are anxious. I mean, anxiety has increased. Exponentially. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember people being anxious when I was a kid and now it's every kid is paralyzed with anxiety. Today. Yes. Yeah. You know, I was just talking to, I was just talking to a good friend of mine and she said that her, her 13 year old is not able to go to sleep unless he takes two of our sleep supplements and two of our stress PM supplements. This is a 13 year old. So, uh, you know, it's so interesting to see these parallels happening in our world today where we don't have a lot of control over our environment. So a lot of the things that we're doing are creating even more anxiety. And, and, and really with kids, because kids, part of the, what I want to talk about today is how to position your lifestyle so you have less anxiety. And some people are not calling it anxiety. They're, they're just saying, I just feel anxious or I feel nervous or I feel unsettled or I feel like I can't um, turn my brain off and sleep at night. Um, I, I feel irritable. I feel like I'm snapping. I'm flying off the handle too easily. See, these are all symptoms of your body's fight or flight response. And the, <clears throat> the show today is really going to be geared towards how can you position your lifestyle so that you have less of these symptoms, of this uh, underlying kind of nervousness mm -hmm. or un un being unsettled? And uh, we have to talk about it because so much of what we're talking about today with each other is wearing masks and what's happening with this organization and what's happening with the election and what's happening with, um, you know, this when's the next pandemic going to happen and now we're rolling into the fall time and you know are people going to get even more sick are the rates going to spike again i mean all of these things just think about what people talk about yeah i mean everywhere i go people are talking about something that is negative yeah and so all of this constant negativity and lack of beautiful things like this or the you know the weather of course we've had fires too i mean there's so much negativity and having that constant negativity in our brain, no wonder we're a mess. No. I mean, if you think about it. And so the only way to offset that, besides taking care of your body and besides maybe some supplementation, all of which we've talked about on previous shows, is to try to change what's coming into your body and what you're surrounding yourself with. So let's just talk about kids uh, okay. because it's relevant for adults also. Yeah. And that is when we don't have social connectivity, we are going to be anxious. There is a reason why social connectivity is one of the key factors in allowing you to live longer. Hmm. It's in the top three. Really? It's in the top three reasons why people can live longer. So if you take social connectivity away from kids, they don't have an ability to uh, be able to offset this underlying nervousness and anxiety. First of all, if they're not with other kids, often they're more um, sedentary. They're sitting and gaming all day, or they're on their phone all day, or they're in front of a TV all day, and they're not with other, they're not moving their body, and they're not with other kids, they're not laughing and, and connecting up. And that can cause anxiety or just nervousness or irritability in yeah. a child. So we're seeing that a lot with kids and they're driving their parents crazy. I mean, and that's making the <laughs> parents more nervous and anxious. So this is a really interesting little vortex that we're in right now is all of the negativity, all of the inactivity, lack of social connectivity is creating more anxiety. So what can we do about that? And, um, you know, now that things are loosening up just a little bit, I think that the social connectivity has to be brought back in, maybe even in small groups. So I'll let you all figure that out on your own, how that might happen. But we have to take that seriously. Somehow we have to get dinners in our homes, you know, where we can have, you know, two or three people 
where we get our kids met up with other kids if that if that's possible. Um, there's there's so many ways to reduce anxiety. We can also start changing the way we're eating. Um, I would say most people that I know during the last six months, I don't know if this is true for you, Rusty, most people that I know have gained at least 10 pounds. I have my COVID-19 right here. <laughs> So, so you got to get back to what works for you. Do not feel so depressed that you can't turn this around. The one thing about weight gain is you can fix it. it is, it's fixable. It's not a death sentence. You can fix weight gain, but you've got to turn it around. You have to get back to what you know works. And that is that you have to have consistency which means that you better be doing this consistent for six weeks before you make a determination whether it's working or not. Hmm. So it's a sweet little hummingbird. Yeah. We had two little hummingbirds just uh, <laughs> circling our little area here. Uh, see, that's a good thing for reducing anxiety is nature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So getting back to what works. So eating real food and getting away from cooking foods and eating foods that are packaged that are good for you, that are storing up more toxins in your body and putting more fat on your belly. So avoiding sugars, avoiding flours, packaged foods, just eat real foods, vegetables, lots of vegetables. 50% of your diet should be vegetables, preferably vegetables that are organic. If not, clean them really good. And um, lean proteins, nuts and seeds, a little bit of fruit, um, but mostly that's your diet. Um, whole grains, as long as they're high fiber, uh, you want to get as high a fiber as possible because that slows the release of sugar into your system. So that's really important for reducing anxiety. Um, you know, one of the most common things you can do to reduce anxiety is just, and this is, this is something I have to work at, is just making time to relax more. So, You're not good at that. <laughs> that's why I have a horse and a dog yeah. because they force me to relax. And um, but if you think about women today, so I think about the women that work in our office. We have 96 women that work for our company. And how many men? <laughs> we have four. Oh no, we have five men now. We have five men and 96 women. So um, I'm not biased. It's just the medical field. It's just the medical field. We love men, by the way. We love men. We want to hire more men. So if you're a man out there and you want to you want to apply to One Peak Medical, feel free. We will interview you. <laughs> anyway. So we have 96 women, and it's so uh, disheartening for me to think about what women are going through right now. So they're working full-time in our office, one of our medical offices, and um, then their kids are being homeschooled, and their husbands or partners are often working too. And so they're having to work, run home at lunch, or connect with their kids at lunch, make sure they're doing their homework, or they've had to hire somebody to come right. in and take care of their kids to teach them. It's really it's, tough. It's the craziest, craziest thing ever. So talk about not being able to relax is women today and men who are feeling so stretched from having to work, get their kids educated and their kids are just not wanting to do it. They're just not having it. I would have been and, terrible this and time. Oh, I would have yeah. too. I mean, serious. I would have yeah. just lost it. Yeah. So I have so, so much, um, so much sympathy and empathy for, for people today who are having to really be stretched thin because one of the ways to reduce anxiety is to relax more. But when do you do that when you don't have time? Right. So relaxing more is something you can do even 10 minutes, 10 minutes a day. So what I might recommend is instead of racing home to your children after work, if, if this is the situation, it might be, I remember doing this when my kids were at home, it might be that you pull your car off to the side of the road and you just put your, put your chair back in your car for 10 minutes and just breathe. It might, and I, I mean, no phone calls, no emails, no texting, no nothing else, just literally just in a safe place. Hmm. Just, or maybe even in your driveway when you get home, before you go in, just, just, just stop your brain for 10 minutes and breathe. And it's just a reset. So there are some things, maybe just say, you know what, everybody, I've had enough for today. Um, um, at, at 8.30 every night, I'm going to take a bath. It's going to take 15 minutes. I'm going to be in there. Don't you dare open that door. <laughs> Don't you dare. Uh, uh, and so this is, these are some just little things you can do. Going to bed earlier if you can. 
um, going for a walk after dinner by yourself with your dog. Um, when is a good time for bedtime, you think? You have a- yeah, so bedtime, I really think it's important. Now, this is just my personal opinion. I think it's really important to be in bed by 10. <clears throat> you really need eight hours of sleep every night. That's just for if things are normal. So if you are, and, and I don't feel well with less than eight hours. I mean, Dang. if I could go to bed at 10 and wake up at six, that's like my natural, like if I don't set any alarms, that's my natural rhythm, 10 to six. Now I actually try to go to bed at, at nine because I get up really early. <clears throat> so I get up before five. So if I'm not in bed and pretty much asleep by nine, I'm kind of panicking because mm. I need eight hours of sleep. <clears throat> so the, the problem is, is that when you're under a lot of stress, you need more sleep. But that's not what people do when they're under stress. They don't sleep more. Right. They sleep less. But your body needs more recovery. So the, the, these are some things you, you have to think about is that deep sleep is really important. But you have to tell your brain it's time to go to bed. So think about, you know, what most people do before they go to bed. They're just trying to fit the next 10 things in before they get to bed. Send the next 15 text messages surf the internet for some um, stress relief by doing some shopping <laughs> and, and, and email a few you know, highly emotionally charged emails. That's not how you tell your brain it's time to go to sleep because even the light off your TV and computer, or we've talked about this, people watch these series on TV <laughs> Like like Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. I mean, that thing will get you revved up. I mean, that's a you're high, into that one. That's a, I love Yellowstone. Okay. I haven't seen it's it. It's a high intensity show, but if you watch that right before you go to sleep, you're probably going to have some pretty significant dreams, and maybe not get to the depth of sleep that you need. So just 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 think about what you're telling your brain to do when you're trying to go to sleep. Is you've got to unwind and reduce the light that's coming into your eyeballs. Uh, melatonin. I always think about Little House on the Prairie. I bring this up all the time because it's so it's such a real it's such a real visual. And probably a lot of people that aren't my age don't remember Little House on the Prairie. But they just anyone in the old days would use light to regulate their sleep cycles. So when the sun went down, it was time to actually go to bed. Mm-hmm. So and then when the sun came up, there would they would wake up. So that's how melatonin works in your body is that it goes up when the sun goes down and it comes down when the sun comes up. So it's supposed to be that way, but we're so jacked up with all of our light, our artificial light, you know, all the way till 9, 10, 11 midnight, right. you know, and then you wake up in the middle of the night and you turn the light on to go to the bathroom or you get your phone and you start answering text messages like three in the morning when you're peeing. So this is all stimulating the wrong brain chemicals for sleep. So that, that doesn't work. So this all causes more anxiety, which we have to start changing our lifestyle to get a handle on. And this is important to teach your kids because they need to know these kind of things are not working for them. Mm. And even if they change one or two things, don't eat sugar at night or you're gonna have a blood sugar drop at three in the morning, you're gonna be wide awake. So there's just little things that you can do that start surrounding yourself with nurturing things to calm you down so that you're not, you're not running around like a little stress puppy. Right. Although I know some people that are so stressed out, they just can't even imagine a way to even calm themselves down. Yeah, and that's why you start simple. Mm -hmm. You start simple because you're not crazy. Uh, Panic attacks are not going to kill you. Uh, We've we've talked about this before, that panic attacks are the opposite of impending death. You're not going to die because it's your body fighting. It's the fight or flight response. So your body's actually trying to fight to get you to be okay. So panic attacks are are not going to kill you. So, but, but you have to start changing things that get your body and your mind and your thoughts to calm down. And that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen by being on your phone all day. Right. It happens by getting into nature and moving your body and getting things a little bit more balanced and feeding yourself high nutrient foods. That's how it happens. Uh, it happens by, by taking your social connectivity serious, like get together with people and laugh, watch a funny movie. Get the other endorphins moving in your body so that you can calm yourself down. That's how it happens. It starts with just one or two things at a time. Really great advice. And if you want to find out more, also there's probably some supplements that would help a little bit too. Yes. So I recommend the mood supplement. Every single person that has any kind of irritability, anxiety, PMS, um, hormonal hormonal mood fluctuations, um, seasonal affective disorder, which happens more in the winter time. Um, or kids that, that, that have irritability um, or mood issues but also can't sleep, the mood supplement works for both. It's very safe to use, can be used at night. 
Um, uh, I also use it to help people get off antidepressants that don't want to be on them. It's, it's a slower process, but it works really good for that. So, and, and we guide them through that at the medical office. So these are just some things that you can do that, that, that make a big difference. Really, really great stuff. Go to nishajackson.com to find out more about those supplements, what supplements that she just talked about, how you can get those. That's uh, nishajackson.com. You can also go to onepeakmedical.com. Another great supplement is uh, Brand X, which is a great uh, little uh, drink, the pickup sticks. Yes. Yes, that, that is a good drink. Um, and actually, kids can drink that too. It's mm. high antioxidants. It's excellent for your immune system, but it's really good for focus, focus and energy. Mm. So, and that's, that's what people are lacking often today mm -hmm. too. Takebrandx.com is where you'd find that. Takebrandx.com. Subscribe to the Nisha Jackson Show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified every time it comes out. Also, uh, share it, like it on Facebook, let people know. And if you're watching or listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, make sure that you subscribe and share as well. Until next time, we sure appreciate you. I'm Rusty Humphreys. That's Nisha Jackson. And this is the Nisha Jackson Show. Stay cool and calm.